another thing most people probably don't realize until reading your book is like the most large, people don't realize a lot of shit. a lot of stuff that you've done. I didn't even, I mean, I didn't even know so. Javid used to intern for me. Yeah. So Javid, not to know a lot of this stuff. Shows you how much he's paying attention to the job. He was too busy plotting for the for the life files. Why he was working for me? So by the way, I knew that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay, so most people will not realize until reading the book uh, the role you had in the Jacob the Jeweler um, watch. Um, yeah. How did that idea come about and uh, exactly how successful was the watch line for you guys? Look, I looked at Jacob and his hair is slicked back and he's running around, you know, giving guys all the diamonds in the world and everybody's coming to him to get the diamonds. He's like the only guy and I'm like, the same thing. Why aren't you turning that into a branded business? Same philosophy as saying to Jay, like we're doing the Air Force Ones, why don't we do the Escartas? Turn it into your own thing. Jacob is taking diamonds that has no name on it, with cr and crosses that have no name on them, and selling them. Meanwhile, Tiffany is doing the same thing, but it's called Tiffany. Why don't we do something? But now, but my, my first instinct was, you know what? You can't brand a cross. You need a lead item, right? You can get there, but you can start branding objects. And I keep saying a cross, but whatever. That was at the time people were wearing that. Jesus pieces, crosses, birds, I don't know, whatever your thing was. Mm -hmm. You can't brand it. You can tell somebody, oh, I got this from Jacob. But there's nothing that you looked at it and could tell it. I know you got that from Jacob, right? It's yeah. diamonds on a piece. So the idea was to put something out there that could legitimately have your name on it and then build a business on the back of that. That's just the way I think. So instantly, the first thing that you could do that with was watches. Because everybody knows a watch by the name. Everything else has no name. Mm -hmm. It's called Jesus Piece. Yeah. That's called a watch by Audemars or Rolex or Jacob. Got it. So how were you able to, you know, go to someone like that and, and you know, you're not a watchmaker yourself. How, how do you go from, you know, saying, hey, I have this idea to going to someone who's an established jeweler and, and you know, bringing that idea I mean, to life? without curiosity, there'll never be innovation, right? So I'm curious about every in industry, whether it be making cigars, making sneakers, making clothing, building Carol's daughter, helping Jacob with watches. I don't care. I never cared about that because it's the same instincts that go into all of those things. For, for something to be successful, you'd be very shocked. You spend as much time watching something fail as you do making something successful. Exact amount of time. I'd much rather spend the time in a productive way making something successful and not letting all of the things like, I don't know nothing about watches, let me make that an obstacle for me not to get into watches. No. I know that if Jacob put his name on a watch, he could sell a bunch of watches. If Jay put his name on a sneaker, he could sell a bunch of sneakers. I know that. I knew that instinctively. So trying to figure out how to get into the watch business and who's going to make the watch and who the manufacturing guys are, that's, that really is the easy part. Because when you've got something that's going to sell, that's a rare combination. Having, having something that you automatically know is going to work and going to sell is the hard part. Getting it distributed and getting it made, it's not as hard as most people think. And people go, oh, well, it's easy for you to say that now. No. It wasn't, it's not easy for me to say that now. It's always been easy to say that. The idea, if you have an idea that's unique enough and, you, and it has a, the probability of it's working is really high and you're a sales guy, you're going to find a partner who's going to back that idea because that is the commodity, the idea. Uh, you talk about a lot. Uh, Jay-Z being one of the first people early to trust your business instincts with his brand. Um, do you remember the first collaboration you two worked together on and what do you, what do you think it is that makes you two such good business partners? Um, we were friends for a long time. I, the, oh, the first thing that we worked on and we were very proud of is um, when I went to him and I hired him to do write the lyrics for Still DRE. I had, I, had a I had a CD when I was running in the scope. I had a CD, and, and he was making the um, the album, the the second Chronic album. Yeah. Right. Dre gave me five beats, and it was like, yo, Dre gave you beats. Dre gives nobody beats. 
I had CD and Beats, and I took it, and I went to Jay, and we needed the first single for the album. And Jay was like, I said, yo, whatever beat you think, think, you know, you rock, and I need you to hit that. And he wrote it, and he wrote Snoop's part, which was crazy to me. And I remember we took it, and we drove from New York to Atlantic City, and we got lost. You and Jay-Z in the car? Yeah. I had a silver Bentley, and we were driving to a, 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 a junior mafia show. He was going to perform with them at Atlantic City, and we got lost and ended up in Trenton, which is a whole other story, <laughs> because people in Trenton didn't even know him as a rapper. They knew him as a guy who used to be in Trenton doing business. It was the craziest thing for me to go through Trenton with him during that time in 2000. When we did that, we kept, and we, by the way, we listened to this thing at least 50 times. Like, this is crazy. This record is nuts. And I would say that was the first collaboration that we did. It was very successful. Then we, then we did records with Maya, and he, we started working together more and more. And then, you know, the friendship and everything grew, and we did a, the S. Carter deal. Okay. So what do you think it is that makes you two uh, good business partners? Like, it seems to work so well. I, I mean, it's, Jay's a great guy, man. He's mm -hmm. easy. Okay. You know, if he trusts you and you're an honest guy, it's easy. You know, it's, it's you know, it's it's it's. Look, what are we gonna do that we think we can do the best? I really wanted to be the best. You really wanted to be the best, and we agree on what the best look like. You know, what the success look like. We have very similar point of views on what success looks like to us. So when we go at something, we will go at it with an energy and a passion to get to the thing that we already predetermined. And we are going to be relentless until we get to that place. And because we see eye to eye on that, I think that's what makes us great anytime we do business together. And, you know, on top of that, we happen to be good friends, so it all just works out. But I would tell you the business part, because I have friends I don't do business with, is because whatever we define success is, we do not stop until we know that we are going to hit that mark. And if we do not hit that mark, then we fail. Not everything, not, not all the other things before that may look successful. The thing that we predetermined. 